Hi everyone, welcome. I am so excited to share um, my time here with Bron Jones. She's an artist in the UK. And we're just gonna talk a little bit about um, the upcoming intuitive composition course that starts September the 16th. The early bird finishes today at midnight, um, but you can still get in after that. It's just not um, the early bird price, but um, Braun has taken the intuitive composition course uh, January this year. So I invited her to join me and she graciously um, accepted. And so we're going to chat with her about what her experience was, because sometimes people just really need to hear other artists experience about what it was like so that they can kind of see if it resonates with them. So thanks so much for joining me, Braun. Pleasure. Um, I just want you to, you know, kind of tell people a little bit about, you know, your journey as an artist, sort of your, um, where you are in the UK, and then we'll um, sort of jump in on a question that I wanted to ask you. Okay. Um, I'm recently retired uh, deputy head teacher of a primary school and re about four years ago now. Um, and my art had been shelved for that career. So I've rediscovered it since retiring um, and spent my time doing lots of different courses and um, you know trying to learn new skills and develop ideas um, because I am naturally a control freak and um, I needed help in controlling my control freak basically <laughs> um, yeah so that that's it. yeah that's what that's what started it all going um, so always able to um, draw and paint realistically but found that very very frustrating in because I wasn't wasn't expressing anything more freely than that so I've been spending the last few years working on towards that so that's how I that's me that's great oh, and I'm in Wales I'm in Wales yay well that's a place <laughs> I haven't been to yet so um looking for and when we go next you shall be one of my stops I do hope so. I'll have to I let my husband know, though. <laughs> well, that's great. So um, now I've kind of seen you in and out and on Instagram and Facebook, and we've connected here and there. So, you know, my first sort of question really was what made you decide to take intuitive composition um, in January 2021 this year? Um, I found that... Um... I'd, I'd done lots of different courses with artists that I really enjoyed. And whilst I absolutely loved doing them, I found that I finished them and was emulating what they had taught me, you know, their style. And whilst it was lovely to create um, art that had freer elements, it was all incremental towards trying to be a more abstract artist. I was still frustrated that what was coming out on the canvas didn't feel like it was me. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and um and then I took CVP which was a huge um a huge leap because I'd never had a formal art ed education so that was amazing in that it taught me lots of principles but I still wasn't uh working from my heart if you like I still wasn't um I wasn't working intuitively basically mm -hmm. and was tended to find that uh everything that I tried to learn over the years I was trying to use it all, all the time. So I would have this amazing mess, <laughs> this busy, colorful mess on a canvas. And then I got, well, I, it was one of your, uh, your newsletters and it would describe the uh, intuitive um, course. And I just thought, that's it, that's what I needed. I needed help in tapping into being more intuitive and being more expressive but analytical at the same time of what I was doing yeah um so that's how I that's how it came about that's fantastic that's great and so um how do you feel then having taken the course has affected your art practice since then oh immense it's been brilliant <laughs> oh god I Absolutely love that brilliant. <laughs> it's had a it, it's there's been a massive change in my work um and not just a change in my work but the change in the way I feel about my work as I'm doing it and as I look back on it uh, when I'm reflecting on it um I'm, I'm asking more questions inwardly of myself rather than thinking about 
um, sort of all the principles that I've learned in the past and all the, the so-called rules. Um, and it's, I've become more able to um, or play and explore without obsessing about it being a pretty picture at the end. Isn't Which that amazing? It is. I mean, that is a massive leap for me. That's huge leap for me because I always keep think. I've always got used to thinking about the finished product, and that finished product should be, uh, um, you know, a beautiful painting for someone's wall. Yeah. And um, and the thing was, what was really frustrating was it never was. You know, it wasn't something that I loved. Other people said, "Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely," but it wasn't something that I wanted to put on my own wall. Mm. But I've actually produced, since doing the course, I have my work on my walls now. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. As I remember talking to you once, it might have been in the IC me, uh, sorry, the ICC course when we did the group calls that you said, oh, I wouldn't put any of my work on the wall. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's great, Bron. That's really, really great. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So do so do I because I found that I found that really frustrating that I was if I'd gone into a big gallery and my work was on one wall and there were other artists around I would I would know that I would walk past mine and go and look at somebody else's mm -hmm. and now I like looking at my work at my own work so that is I'm, so exciting yeah. yeah it is I mean and it's you still <laughs> and you pardon my um interruption but you just finished a solo show and you're doing another show this autumn which is amazing yeah well I mean that was that's that blew me away I mean and it's that's that also came out of it because because I was happier with the way I was producing my work and the way it was I was expressing myself more I was more confident in representing myself so when I went to see this lady, um, I was given an introduction to this curator, gallery curator. Um, I was more able to talk about why I was doing what I was doing because your course had enabled me to tap into what it was I was looking for. And also, you know, the, the different aspects of the course that you did enabled me to be analytical about what I'd done um and to see how things could be improved or, or at least recognize why I didn't like something right so that gave me the confidence to talk to her and when she said do you fancy doing a show I jokingly said oh yeah just ask away and she reached for her diary and I was kind of like oh <laughs> so you know and it and it went from there That's and amazing. Um, that was thrilling because I, I sold uh six large pieces from that so it was oh really wow fun. congratulations that's amazing you. that's amazing I know. and the, and i think the thing that's thrilled me the most is that it's caused two other galleries to contact me i haven't contacted them so that's that's for me i mean that's huge that's huge as far as i'm concerned and um it's a thrill it's an absolute thrill and that that's that change has come about because of the way your course has enabled me to understand what it is I am trying to do. Um, we still have a way to go, let's be fair. Yeah, but, but, you're, <laughs> but you're embracing more of, it sounds like, and just some um, connecting between the two of us um, in that course, you are embracing more of what you want and not second guessing it as much or wondering whether you should be doing this or that you've sunk into appreciating what you want to do rather than second guessing it it sounds like yeah and and also you the um that was the great the, the great thing about the course as well is not just the content but the calls where we get to you know talk things through um, because I got quite frustrated at one point when the, the horizon line reappeared in my work, you know, oh, I'm supposed to be doing abstract. Oh. And then, you know, through discussion with you and other members on the course, well, so you got a horizon line. It's fine. You know, <laughs> that's, calm down. Um, so, so, and that's, an, you know, if, if the horizon line is what I naturally am drawn to doing, if there's going to be one, 
what I would try and do is get rid of it. Oh, no, I can't have a horizon line. And of course, then I lost the, the pull towards that piece of work anyway. Whereas now, if there's a horizon line, I leave it there unless it gets covered up for whatever reason. But it's not because I'm busy going, I'm an abstract artist, there mustn't be a horizon line. <laughs> <laughs> Is what I was doing and then couldn't oh. understand why I couldn't settle into the work because I was getting rid of things that I obviously naturally liked simply because well you're an abstract artist you don't have horizon lines yeah so. I just love seeing like how you have I don't really like the word blossom but like you just you're it's like seeing the unfolding of wings and they just keep unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. And the change that I've seen in you is enormous. Like just you really sinking into appreciating what your curiosity and your ideas are bringing to you in your life and how you, instead of second guessing it or comparing it or whatever, you're just this is what I'm doing. Isn't this awesome? And we all have second guessing, right? Like yeah. that just sort of sneaks in, but you've just managed to, yeah. Okay. That's fine. But uh, this is what I want to do. And this is so exciting. This is really, really exciting for me to see that. Well, and me too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everybody, tell everybody where your show is. Cause I want to make sure that they, if someone's um, living near you, that they get a chance to go see your work. Yeah, the um, the second the the upcoming show. Now, so I've just done one, and I've got an upcoming show with um, in a gallery called Little Buckland Gallery, which is run by uh, Arabelle Kisley. Um, and uh, I am doing a collaborative show with my dear friend and artist Natalie Day. Um, so we we are we have been co-creating um, through WhatsApp video calls through um, lockdowns all the, through the pandemic. And then when, when we were allowed to travel, she came over to stay and we've been going out and doing all these wacky, crazy things on the mountainsides around here. So we're actually going to, that's all going to culminate in a show together, that's which so is really exciting. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So repeat again where the sh upcoming show and the date is for anyone. Oh, who yes, the date. It's in, it's in Little Buckland Gallery, which is in Little Buckland near Broadway uh, in the Cotswolds. And it starts on Friday, the, I'm just looking at the calendar to make sure the date is right. Friday, the 15th of October. Okay, great. Excellent. Yeah. So anybody who can travel to go see Braun's show, make sure that you do that because it's going to be a real treat. So um, I guess the only other thing that I was dying to ask you was, and thank you so much for sharing all that because I think it's really, sure. really valuable. Yeah. Um, and fun for me to hear this too, I have to say, uh, because, you know, it's, it's interesting, like we travel through our lives doing things and that, you know, the, the older you get, um, you sort of, at least for me anyway, awaken to yourself more and more and more. You catch on even to some of your antics that might not be serving you very well. And if you, if you're really interested, you'll even see if you can do something about those or learn how to manage them or, or what have you. And, um, you know, one of the things that I noticed uh, years and years ago is for some reason, I have this uncanny ability to not know where I'm going, but to just follow my nose. Like I'll get these little inklings. Yes, you should do this. I don't even know why, but I just do it. And since that, you know, I think it was way back in, um, oh, I, I did a student exchange in Holland actually is where I really noticed this thing because there were so many unknowns. I traveled through Europe for a month first before I did this six month student exchange, but there were things that had to happen or were, could happen and I wasn't sure and I, could, I just knew. And so I started paying attention to that, like, is this, is this what intuition is or what have you? And so since then, and that was in the nineties, right? Like that's like, you know, a while ago and just have been traveling along through my life and doing things, lots of things, like whether I go and work for a company or whether I sign up for a course or whether I leave Vancouver and move out here five hours away, all of these things are 
yes, you have to do this. And there's not even a lot of um, anything set up like here's you've got a job waiting for you. Nothing like that. Just follow my nose. And so I've really put a lot of value in listening. Now I can see how important it is to listen to ourselves because it doesn't steer me wrong. It doesn't. So anyway, I wanted to share that because to, to me, intuitive um, awareness is so important and integral in my work, even if maybe my work sometimes doesn't feel very emotional to me, but sometimes it does. And so just that whole um, level that you can sink into your work. I mean, you could just do a beautiful cerebrally, you know, put together piece, or you can get right in there and just follow your nose, your intuition, or even express yourself emotionally. So all of those things are just so um, available to us is really, mm -hmm. really, yeah. really important for me to share that. So the last question was, what was your biggest takeaway um, from the course? So and you might have already shared that, but for anybody who might be sitting on the fence still, what, what was that for you? Um, well, it's kind of uh, kind of what I've touched on, but I think it's the it's the recognizing that the imposter syndrome that um, that I suffer with, and I think uh, what I'm learning is that most artists I've met seem to have it every now and again. That that's okay, um, and it's and it's like the my control freak. I know that it's like this little gremlin sitting here, and I know every so often that's going to pop up. That's gonna that's going to be this this voice going, oh, it's not a finished picture, someone's got to buy that, you must finish it quickly, it's got to be a pretty picture, blah, blah, blah. Um, so recognising that's going to crop up, so I'm not going to, so I don't panic about it anymore. So when that used to crop up, I used to just, it just used to freeze me and I'd end up being tight and drawing pretty pictures, uh, detailed pictures again. Now I know that's going to happen, but because of all the work that we've done uh, on your course, I'm better able to just think, yeah, okay, you're entitled to your opinion, but actually I'm not interested in what you've got to say. I'm going to carry on with this over here. Yeah. And doing other things, doing other exercises that just sort of don't matter, you know, doing things until the gremlin has shut up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that enables me. So I think basically what you've done, you've given me the tools to actually ignore the control freak, acknowledge its existence. It's never going to go away, but ignore what it's saying and still enjoy doing the intuitive playfulness um, and not letting that, that control freak take over. That's, that's huge for me because as an ex-teacher, huh, I just <laughs> controlled everything, you know, so. <laughs> well, it's amazing how thoughts, and that's all they are, but they can feed our emotions, right? So a thought comes into your head and then you get this charge um, afterwards. And that charge has the power to totally derail your afternoon. But if you yeah. can see that you're, you got charged and you know that that was a thought and you have tools, you can go, oh, wow, wow. You just went on this little like wild rampage. Um, I can't do this kind of thought process. And you've stirred yourself up and you don't actually need to do that because that was just thought. You can choose another thought. Yeah. The other thought is, God, this is awesome stuff. I think I'll have some fun today. I mean, get out of here, right? Yeah, yeah. But that, I think that's that. I mean, and because of because of who I am, that's been the biggest help because it enables me then to keep utilizing all the other things that we learned with you. So looking at my work, uh, reflecting on it and using all the different principles and things that you taught us about without always worrying about what this little voice in my head saying, oh, is it good enough? You know, what, who do you think you are? And that's got to be a pretty picture and that sort of thing. So it gives me the freedom then to actually use the, what you've, what you've shared with us yeah. in, in a more effective way. It sounds, it sounds um, like with all of you, you, who you are, you don't get trapped anymore in that particular part that, because you're much more, than these little, and I have these things too, right? And I can notice them like they, something comes up and it, it starts to bug me and, and it might even worry me. And I think, whoa, whoa, that's actually a clue, right? Whoa, whoa. 
ah, you just launched onto a thought that's not serving you. It could come from years and years ago, you know, that I'm still getting caught up in. But now you get to be more fully you because you don't have to be driven by that one thing. And let's face it, negative stuff is pretty powerful stuff that yep. that can, um, you know, you can be really excited. You got, um, you sold a painting and then you get an email from somebody that isn't very nice. And then which one wins? This one. And then you have to take this one and say, get out of here. But yeah. unfortunately, negativity does because it hurts, because it hurts, right? Um, but it sounds like you've got um, you've gotten a lot out of it, and I really appreciate you sharing that. And I'm so excited about your shows. My it's, pleasure. It's been it's brilliant. It's so great. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Bron. Yeah. And um, I will um, I'll place this up in Instagram and on YouTube and I'll have a link for you so they can come and see you. Um, anybody who's interested in your show can reach out to you and things like that. Thank you so much for um, chatting with me about composition. Everybody, uh, September 1 by uh, midnight is the end of the early bird, but it'll be open until September 16. Uh, still for sign up. You just don't get the early bird. So get in there now if you uh, if you can. Okay, thank you again, Bron. I really <laughs> appreciate it.